So one of the biggest problems with working with this kind of diffuse light where you've got a screen uh, covering your model and softening the light that's coming onto their face is as the sun passes through the screen onto the face and continues to travel towards the ground, that light is then, some of that light will be kicked back into the face and the color of the ground is going to be also reflected into the skin tone. So in this case, we've got bright green grass. So the sunlight passes through the reflector, hits the ground, and a, some, a, a tint of green is going to be reflected in the skin tone. Now, this is something that you don't always notice. Uh, and if you were using something, say, like a silver reflector or a white reflector, it may uh, override that, that green skin tone. Uh, and a good trick is to also put a white or a silver reflector just in front of your model so that it's actually clean white light that is bouncing into the face. So in this instance, we don't have anything on the ground and you can see there are hints of green that are reflected into the uh, highlights there. So you've got some there on the nose, under the eyebrow there, and uh, even in the, in the highlights in the hair as well. So to get rid of those, a fairly simple uh, couple of steps in Photoshop and you can eliminate those. The best way to eliminate those is to try and avoid them in the first place. So a good idea to perhaps carry a white reflector or even a white sheet and lay that down in front of your model just out of shot so that the, the light that is always reflecting back into your model is a clean light rather than a light that's going to be tinged with green or often you might have an orange surface that you're photographing on or a red surface, whatever color it is, it's going to reflect back into your skin tone. Now, if you ever find that you've done a portrait like this where you've worked in bright light, used a diffuser, but haven't have forgotten to put a, a reflector there or just didn't have the opportunity and now that you've opened the image in Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture, you have noticed that, oh no, there is this green tint. It's fairly easy to remove and I'm going to show you how to do that now. All right, there's actually a few ways that you can remove a green tint in skin tone in a portrait like this. So the first way that I wanna show you is using a curves adjustment layer. So what I'm gonna do is Command J to duplicate the layer. And then I'm gonna come down to my adjustment layers here. So it's the circle uh, with a uh, two disks in half, the, that little icon down there. Click on that and I'm going to come down to curves. All right, so I get this little dialog box and what I'm going to do is I'm coming down to this where it says RGB and I'm gonna click on green. All right, so now I've only got the green channel selected and you see this little hand here? I can now bring this color picker here into my, I'm just gonna zoom in. So I'm going to now highlight the most uh, affected areas where it's the most green. So here under the under the eyebrow, I'm going to click on that. Now if I drag up, it's going to actually increase the green and we get this uh, incredible Hulk thing going on. So I know that to reduce the green, I need to drag down. And I'm just looking at that little area, that little patch, until it starts to sort of take on a more neutral look so about there okay and then I might do another one just in here and you can see that it's adding the points if you look on on the diagram it's adjusting the curve with each little addition that I make I might do this little nose area here all right and maybe just as a final one just under here Okay, so 
I come back to my layers now, you can see what I've done, what, what, what Photoshop has done is actually added uh, some of the opposite of the green, which is magenta. So I don't want to actually adjust the, the entire image. I just want to adjust the areas that have been affected by that green tint. So what I'm going to do is hide everything that I just did in the layer mask by hitting Command-I, and that's going to invert all that. And now I can come back with a brush. I've got white as my foreground color selected. And everywhere I brush with white is going to reveal that new uh, magenta tone that I've just added to the image. So I'll make sure that my mode is normal. I've got a nice soft brush selected. So zero hardness, opacity 100%. I'm going to have my flow down very low, around 6%. So what I'm going to do is now come in and just start brushing in those areas. And you can see, you can see just in, in, in here in the layer mask uh, where I'm brushing with white will appear. It will reveal what's underneath. So if I, as I brush on the areas of green that I want to remove the tint, it's now replacing that with its opposite on the color wheel. So basically it's just uh, neutralizing that, that green tint and you get a much more natural looking skin tone. So fairly low flow and I can build on the areas where I want to add more. And if I think I've gone too far, I can hit X, which will change my foreground color to black. And I can come back and just go over those areas where I think I'm adding too much magenta and go back to white. And if I just toggle on and off, you can see, especially this area here where we're getting rid of the green. And I can see like quite a lot here under the, under the neck there, the, where, where it's bounced in. All right, and I can also see a lot in the hair, a lot of green reflected in the hair. So I'm just going over that area there into the highlights, just getting rid of all that. Okay, and so once I've done that and I'm pretty happy with it, I look at over the whole image and it may in fact be that I've gone too far the other way and uh, I've added in too much magenta. And so I can just knock back the opacity of the layer because I can see her uh, neck is looking a little bit too red. So all I need to do now is just knock it back a little bit so that it looks a little more natural. So probably somewhere around 60%. So let's toggle on before and after, and you've got a more neutral looking uh, shot there. And I can even come in and build up some more on the areas where I just want to get rid of that green a little more. All right, so that's one way to do it. And now I want to show you another way. One of the easiest ways to remove a color cast is to use the opposite color uh, in, in the editing process. And the way I do that is the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the layer. So that's Command J. So now I have an exact copy of that layer, my background layer. I've replicated it exactly. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to remove this green tint you can see it in the highlights on the face there and especially in the neck. So I want to get rid of it altogether. So I'm going to come down to filter, blur, and I'm going to choose average. And when I do that, what happens is that Photoshop takes the average of all the colors and blurs it and, and you get the color that's most prominent in the image, which in this case is this green that's the color cast so that's the actual average of the color cast now if i invert that so create it the opposite and blend those two together 
one is going to cancel the other out. So if I hit Command I, I've now got the opposite of green, which is in this case, or the opposite of this sort of pastel green is a pastel purple. Now, technically this is the opposite of the green. If I blend this layer into my original image, where it's green will be cancelled out by the purple and I should get a neutral tone. The one step that I need to do before I do that is change my blend mode from normal to color. And okay, so we've blended out all the colors, taken out all the green, added the purple and we get a completely neutral tone. So that's overkill. But if I now take the opacity and knock it back to about 50%, you'll see, and just having a look at the skin tone, that it's looking pretty good and we've got like a pretty neutral looking skin tone. Like in fact, too neutral. So I can bring it back maybe to about 40. And it's going to vary depending on the shot, the particular shot that you've had in that you've created yourself so even 30 let's have a look at that before and after and have a look where the green is we'll just go up a little bit we'll go to 40 and that's pretty much gotten rid of the whole tint what it's also gotten rid of is it's taken the saturation out of my grass and it's taken a lot of the color out of her face so what i'm going to do is rather than leave it at that, I'm going to create a layer mask. So it's this little icon here. And now I'm going to invert the layer mask. So what I've just done is hidden every, every, uh, everything that I've just done. So underneath this layer mask is this purple tone that's been added over the green. And now what I can do is take my brush, zero hardness, Blend mode normal, opacity 100%, flow at 6%, and I can come in, brushing with white, and wherever I brush, I'm going to just be adding that sort of magenta-y, purple-y tone, which is the opposite of green, and it gets rid of the green, pretty much. So. I can just increase my flow as well, just so it's a bit faster. And you can see that wherever I'm brushing, it's neutralizing that green skin tone, but I'm not losing the, the green everywhere else that I want to maintain, like in the eyes. And I'm also maintaining the color of the hair and the color of the sky and the color of her dress. So it's just in the areas where the green color cast is an issue, but I'm managing to keep the color of the grass and the, and the sky and everything else. So, but we've gotten rid of that color cast there. So that's like, it's really a two minute trick to get rid of any extra green tint. So you can see the outline of her face there in the mask. So we've got before and after. And again, you can tweak, but I reckon about 40% to me seems about right. And that's gotten rid of the majority of that green tint.